Could you help define exactly the significance of the dynamic between perhaps a frontline physician, maybe a primary care doc who might be getting this first referral and their communication to a specialist referral or understanding that that's the next step? Well, I think we know that in individuals who have uh, certain forms of pulmonary fibrosis, the delay in their diagnosis is, is critically important. For one specific form called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, which is one of the most common forms of pulmonary fibrosis, um, the, the mean survival is between um, uh, 1.8 and, and, and uh, five years. And so uh, a delay in diagnosis is of utmost in, um, importance to avoid because um, the significance of, of that disease and, and the way in which it affects patients' survival and, and their quality of life is quite important. And so having a, at least a, an appropriate degree of awareness of it so that in the right patient, they can um, collaborate with uh, individuals that have experience in caring for those with pulmonary fibrosis is really important to, to kind of overcome that initial hurdle is um, providing resources through the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation for patients, for their, their physicians to better understand the different forms, the impact on patients, um, an efficient way to diagnose the disease, and also put them in touch with regional resources. We have what's called a care center network at the foundation, which are um, centers that have experience as well as the resources to uh, allow for rapid diagnosis. And in contrast to some other diseases, oftentimes there's a, a, a a complex array of, of things that need to be done. So not only seeing the patient and, and taking a thorough history, looking for exposures that might injure their lung, um, as well as the, the rate of their symptoms, but also pulmonary function testing, specific and detailed CAT scans that, that detail the abnormalities of the lung, um, and, and occasionally um, surgical lung biopsy, which is best performed by uh, those with experience. And so not every patient needs all those resources, but in the appropriate patient, sometimes we need all those um, techniques to make a rapid evaluation and a rapid diagnosis with the goal of then implementing appropriate treatments, which can be um, avoidance of irritants in the lung, or perhaps supportive care with uh, pulmonary rehab, supplemental oxygen, those who might need it. We have specific therapies for those with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and, and progressive forms of other form, uh, pulmonary fibrosis. And, and I think what helps in a lot of patients is the community to know that they're not alone, that other individuals and other families have been affected, and that they're part of the solution moving forward, that the more we come together as a community, we advance research, we advance care, um, we assist um, in their day-to-day -day lives. Um, and I think just like other complex diseases, uh, uh, as we come together and collaborate, everyone benefits, and most importantly, the patients and their families. Yeah, absolutely. That's very well said. Um, it can't be stressed enough the significance of uh, proper diagnostics and how it influences advocacy, awareness, and also research and development of proper therapies and care and, um, you know, taking that pretty dire looking uh, mortality duration and, and, you know, expanding it, making it as optimal as we can, individualizing therapy, everything of that nature falls into first setting proper diagnostics and, and being on the lookout for it. So thank you for putting it that way. That was excellent. Uh, speaking of therapies, uh, Dr. Cosgrove, can we go into a little bit of what uh, some of the agents look like right now for pulmonary fibrosis? Is it a pretty fleshed out field or do we have some potential candidates on the horizon or? Well, I guess going back in, in time, the first clinical study done in this space was in um, just about 1999. So that tells you it's still relatively early uh, what I would say is a, a multi-center randomized clinical study. Um, and so we're early in the, uh, the phase, yet we've known about the disease for, you know, if not 100, 200 years. Um, but we have, for one specific disease, there are two approved forms of therapy. They're in a group called antifibrotics. Um, and uh, they have been demonstrated to decrease the rate of progression of disease. Um, and so I think that their approval in, in uh, earlier in 2014 were, were really instrumental in raising awareness and then provided an opportunity at least to augment um, the uh, supportive therapy with pharmacologic therapy. 
um, and that's led to the development of additional um, clinical trials and additional agents, or at least they identify the identification of additional agents that, that might be of benefit to patients. And um, the, the two that are approved for IPF, one is um, called Mintenative and the other drug is Profenadone. Um, and more recently, there have been studies to look if they're also beneficial in, in other fibrotic lung diseases um, and uh, uh, in scleroderma, as well as in what's um, been identified progressive pulmonary fibrosis, where independent of the, the cause of the lung fibrosis, um, patients progress, that um, uh, Nintendive has been identified um, to be uh, uh, um, efficacious in the treatment and delay of progression in those diseases. And additional studies looking at profenadone continue to explore that possibility. Um, and I would argue that uh, the, the, of those trials that are ongoing right now, there are additional agents and, and um, to look at these different forms of pulmonary fibrosis to see if uh, the other pathways are important. And I think that that's a op really optimistic um, perspective on my standpoint that the additional therapies um, work differently. Even the two approved medications, they, their mechanisms of actions are different and the, the assets that are coming to bear over the past few years, they have different mechanisms of action. So it's what it's really telling me is that the way in which we can impact and treat patients, they're likely not just a therapy or two, there are multiple different therapies that might be of benefit if we can um, appropriately evaluate them, make sure they're safe. And so that means that perhaps um, different patients might benefit or have uh, different side effects from different drugs and we'll have different options for patients. And, and the ultimate goal moving forward is to have what's called precision medicine where we have the best treatment for the individual patient um, with the least amount of side effects. And, and we're working with collaborators at Cornell and University of Virginia and uh, National Institutes of Health with partnership with Three Lakes Foundation to really drive that initiative and support it. And we do that with our, um, the, the gifts from our patients who participated in the patient registry. So they donated their data, their uh, blood samples so that we can understand the genetics and um, the different genomics or what genes are turned on or turned off and which proteins are present so that we can hopefully identify treatments and, and treat them the best way possible. So it's really a, a, a constant flux of um, interacting with patients. They drive the research and then we can go back and hopefully take better care of them. So um, the research space is really exciting um, over the past five years, and I would say it's, it's getting even more exciting over the next several years because now we're, we have tools to better understand these complex diseases, and I think we can guide uh, the, the clinical trials moving forward. Um, and I would say that the um, participation of patients in our community is just so wonderful, and they're so highly motivated. I think the limitation now is is identifying them and giving them the opportunity to participate because it appears the vast majority want to help out in some way. So uh, at the foundation, we take that as a responsibility that we really want to help them um, if they're willing to participate. And, and that's part of the awareness.